Hello everyone, Vicki Verley here, Rock and Roll Prophetess. Today I'm going to do another one of these videos. I've done a couple in the past where I go through a popular TV show and I go through the characters in the TV show and I try to guess their sun signs or assess what their sun signs may be based on, you know, just the character's behavior and stuff. So I've done one before. I did one for The Sopranos and then I did one for Game of Thrones and lately I've been watching Northern Exposure. It's back on Prime if you're not aware and it's a... Uh, it's been unavailable for decades. When this show came out, you know, I was about the age of a lot of the characters here. I was about the age of these three characters and even Shelley. You know, I was of the younger and Chris, I was of the younger crew back then. And I never did really watch a lot of TV, but I was watching TV then because I was at home with my kids and, you know, I wasn't going out much, so I was watching a lot of TV then. And I love Northern Exposure because it was so different than anything. And there was no YouTube or anything like that back then. This was in the early 90s, like 30 years ago. And um, I love this show because it was so, um, like, well, there was this hippie element, you know, this small town kind of hippie uh, western town element. But also because of the Native American, uh, the shamanism, Ed's a shaman, and the spirituality and it was sort of metaphysical you know as far as TV shows go <laughs> anyway you know again so I did really like the show back in the day it came out again and I was watching it again so I'm gonna go through some of the main characters most of the main characters there's a few that I left out these minor players um, and some of them I'm trying really hard this thing is I'm trying really hard not to go by their looks because often you can look at somebody and tell it's particularly their rising sign a lot of, you know a lot of times it's by you can guess somebody's sign, you know, uh, by how they look. So I'm trying to eliminate the looks and some some of the other things and just go with the character's personality traits and go through. And some of them I were on the fence about. I almost thought I would say I was going to go as deep as saying, well, this one's this sun sign, this rising, this moon, but I'm not going to go that far. Finally, I did settle on at least one sign for each of the main characters. So let's get started. Well, the first one, of course, is the main man here, Joel Fleischman. He's this doctor who comes to this town. He's a New York doctor and everything. You know, and I went back and forth a little bit with him, but it was pretty easy to see that Joel is a Virgo. I ended on Virgo for him because he's so detailed-oriented. The health care, he's a healer. He's so focused. He's so cerebral. And even in, like, his sexual preference, you know, he's sort of, he, went, he was celibate for a long time. That's a Virgo can do that. Um, and he's a little romantically awkward and Virgos. The only thing was the whining, you know, that's not usually a Virgo trait. Usually Virgos will just roll up their sleeves and get to work, but ultimately Joel did roll up his sleeves and get to work. So that's why I ended up saying that I think that Joel would have been a Virgo, maybe with some Capricorn in there, because he's really into the money, too, or even Taurus, but like rising or moon. But sun sign, I'm going to go with Virgo. Next we have Chris, or Chris in the Morning, as he's known, the hippie, philosopher, artist, guy, um, sculptor, really, you know, philosophical and everything. And he's an, another one that I did go back and forth with. I'm like, is he a Pisces or is he a Sag? And he would be somebody, even Gemini, he's got that mutable energy, but he would be somebody that would might be a Sag with Pisces Rising or Pisces Moon or the other way around. But ultimately I ended up with uh, Chris as a Sagittarius. Mainly because he's the seeker, he's the traveler, um, he's quest for knowledge. You know, that's the ninth house, that's Sagittarius's realm. He's the student and the teacher. And the last thing that really got me, well, he's also a bachelor, you know, and that's the Sagittarius thing. Um, but the last thing that really got me is he's like the preacher, the clergy in the town, too, and that's also the realm of Sagittarius. So with Pisces being a close runner-up second, he might have a Pisces moon or something. Uh, and the other thing was, that this is that looks thing again, too. It may have swayed me or may have not, but a lot of times Sagittarius are real tall and lanky like that. I almost went even for Taurus a little bit because of the voice. He's got that voice. Tauruses are the throat chakra, and they always have that voice. But I ended up looking it up, and I believe that the guy, John, I'm, I'm, his name escapes me right this minute, but I think he is a Taurus in real life. So he's got that voice, you know, that, that when you hear that voice, that smooth voice, it's almost always going to be Taurus or Taurus rising or moon or something like that. But I ended up staying, I, I'm going to go with Chris as a Sagittarius final answer. <laughs> Next, let's go on the next one of Howling, who owns the local bar and is married to this very young girl who's, you know, young enough to be his granddaughter. But that aside, I mean, I, Leo, I mean, he wasn't hard to peg at all. Howling's a Leo all day long. I mean, a little bit, he kind of looks like the Leo, too, with his mane of hair and just his, his look. He's got that lion face a little bit. But um, 
he owns the bar. He loves going and talking to the customers. Um, you know, he's a performer. He's, um, you know, he's singing dance. You know, he wants to be in the spotlight. He's very stubborn and proud. Um, and then you, you see him when he's cooing. He's like putty in Shelly's hands, his wife, you know, and that's that Leo. That's when you stroke that Leo. That's how they, they purr like that. And he, you know, this, no doubt, this was one that was just hands down. Hollings a Leo, hands down. Well, talking about his main squeeze, as she would call herself, <laughs> is Shelly. Uh, you know, she, well, she was pretty easy to Libra right off the bat. And there's another one I tried not to go by the looks too much because she's even got that Libra face, that sunny Libra face, that happy, smiley, you know, uh, that she's got a Libra face for sure. Um, so but that aside, all the pink and the frilly girl stuff and her sunny disposition and everything. So yeah, right away, I feel, you know, Shelly's a Libra all day long. And um, also, like, she's real fair. And when she stole something one time or something, and it was eating her alive, and she had to tell, confess or something. That's kind of a Libra thing, too. But also the way she's always talking. I almost, she might have some Gemini, too, but those Libras are talkative, too. And the way she's chit-chatting and she knows all the latest, the hot goss in the bar and everything. You know, that's that's Gemini. Well, it's a couple of signs, but that's totally Libra, too. So hands down, no no doubt about it, I feel like uh, Shelly is a Libra. Next we go with the big man himself, uh, Maurice. He's the guy who kind of established the town. He's a former astronaut. He's really wealthy, and he's always got his hands in all these business dealings and everything. He's another one that was hard to pick. Because I went Capricorn, you know, he's climbing that highest mountain. But I ultimately I settled on Aries for um, for Maurice, mainly because I think he's so self-absorbed. You know, he's so he's got so much self-importance. But he's always driving, always wanting to go to that new frontier. He went out into space. He went out into the Alaskan, you know, wilds. He's a trailblazer, seeking out new territory. Um, you know, he's always got these new business deals that he's going. He wants to make it a vacation town. But it's a lot of times he doesn't follow through either. That's an Aries thing, too. He's going to have the Sicily water. Or he's going to. He's always looking for an angle in this new thing. And he can be, you know, kind of stubborn, too. Uh, and he, you know, ultimately, he could even have some Taurus in him. Because he, you know, the Taurus and the Capricorn. Because he really loves the finer things in life. You know, the fine wines and all the stuff. That's in his home. He's got all these fine furnishings and everything. That could be very Taurus or Capricorn. But again, he could have those as rising and moon. But I'm going to stick with, uh, he was one that was hard to land on. But I'm going to stick with, I think, Aries uh, for Maurice. Next we go on to Ed. Ed was another one I had a little, you know, was a little bit, could he be Aquarius or could he be Pisces? I went back and forth with that. He's the shaman. He ends up being a shaman. Well, Leonard's a shaman. Leonard's another one I ended up not doing because I didn't really have enough to go on. But he's a shaman in training. Um... So there's that spiritual thing. There's that Piscean thing and everything. But Ed, I think, is ultimately I landed on Ed being an Aquarius. Because Aquariuses are just a little bit odd or a little bit different, you know. They're just like a little bit of an odd, odd duck. And he almost feels like he's got this galactic energy. And he's walking around talking to his spirit guides a couple. He has a couple different ones. Like he's, There's this older shaman man that was following a spirit shaman, not Leonard, different one. And then he had uh, this little green man that was envy or something, his ego. <laughs> so he has these spirit guides and stuff that he talks to. And that's kind of, you know, that could be Pisces too. And the other thing, I, I almost went for Pisces because he's into the film. He's really into film. He wants to be a filmmaker. So he could be like Aquarius with Pisces rising, but... I felt like he was an Aquarius just because he feels a little weird. He feels sort of uh, galactic. Also because he's so part of the community. He was raised by the community. His mother left him on the doorstep or somewhere, you know, abandoned him. And uh, he was raised by all the different people in the tribe and even Maurice to some extent too. So he's got that community thing that's Aquarian in nature. And also he's kind of into the technology of the day. He's got his movie camera. He's got... Um, he does, uh, what was the other thing? Oh, he's faxing all the time. That was the big, you know, it's funny that when you watch this show and you go back, with faxing was the, the hot, you know, the, the latest technology. Oh, we're faxing. But he was, you know, nobody else in the town was having faxing. That would be like the equivalent of emailing today. You know, it was kind of, a, well, it was just kind of ahead of his time a little bit. I think he was ahead of his time in a lot of ways. And just a little bit on the weird side. No offense to any Aquariuses out there. You're weird in the best possible way, but you guys are a little bit different, okay? So, yeah, I put Ed as an Aquarius. 
Next, we're going to move on to Aries. I, I want to back a little bit with Aries. Uh, uh, not Aries. It's funny I said that because she's so Aries. I, I might as well just spill the beans. Yeah, I went to Aries with uh, Maggie because... But I did go a little bit back and forth with um, Capricorn with her because she's so career-driven and everything. But really, you know, she's so independent. She does what she wants. She's, like, in what's traditionally a man's field. She knows how to work on her plane and take it apart and everything, fix plumbing. And she can come off a little bit, you know, kind of... Um, she kind of flies off the handle here. And she's definitely the boss lady. And she can just fly off the handle. That's the Aries thing, too. And also just a little bit... Um, traditional male things like fixing the plane and you know the the plumbing and stuff like that so I went with Aries ultimately on her and also that trailblazer like uh, Maurice but she could definitely have some Capricorn in her and if I went by her looks with the eyes she might be like Pisces or something but Aries for Maggie for sure okay next one is another woman called Marilyn who is Joel's assistant and she's into a whole bunch of stuff she's another one I had a little trouble with I was I was going back and forth between Pisces and Cancer because Cancer because of her looks a little bit because she's got that moon face but also she lives with her mom happily you know she's happily to be, she's very involved with family and her clan and everything that's Cancerian you know and she's into the food and knitting and doing crafts and stuff that can be kind of Cancerian but ultimately I feel like overall she's more of a Pisces and the thing that kind of flipped me over to her being to, to saying for her to be a Pisces again she could have Cancer rising or moon. Um, is that, you know, she's got that mystical thing going on. Like, she's in her own little world. She's got this sense of peace. And that's a very much a Piscean thing. And then the thing that really kind of flipped it over to Pisces for me was, I remembered she was a dancer. And Pisces and Neptune rules over dance. So I'm going to put Marilyn as a Pisces with maybe Cancer Rising or Cancer Moon. Another woman in the town is our Ruth Ann. And, you know, I thought she was sort of old and crotchety back in the 90s, but now I kind of relate more to Ruth Ann. I'm like, yeah, Ruth Ann, you go, girl. You tell them. So I want, you know, I didn't go back and forth, but she's, I see so many things in her. She was hard to pin. But in the, in the end, I went with Capricorn for Ruth Ann because she's, you know, no nonsense. She's well into her senior years and still working. Uh, she has her own business. She does her own thing. She's still thriving in her senior year. She saved up her money over, I don't know how many, 20, 30 years to buy this business and pay Maurice off. She's real practical, hardworking, but she also does have a softer side. But she's just like a no-nonsense kind of girl, which, you know, I went, I went a lot of different... I could see a little Libra in her at times. I could see a little Sag in her at times, because sometimes she can be a little blunt. But I think, like, Maybe it's Capricorns, but older people sometimes when you get to be a certain age, you're just like, you know what? I don't, I don't need to tiptoe around. I'm just going to tell you what I think of you. <laughs> you know? But that could be a Sag thing too. So she could be Sag rising, or even be on the cusp of Sag and Capricorn. But in the end, I ended up going with uh, Capricorn for old Ruth Ann. Next up is Adam. He's a really cool. This strange dude. He's a chef, you know, and. And he's this strange dude, but you find out that he's really, you know, he's this connoisseur. And he's, it's one of those crazy plot lines that I loved about Northern Exposure, this weird guy living in the woods. And then you find out, it reminded me of when my parents had the bar, you know. I think that's why I like that show anyway, because the central hub is kind of the, the bar, the brick, you know, in the town. And all the different characters that come in the bar, well, live in the town, but come in the bar. It reminded me back then of, like, my parents' bar growing up, all the different characters. But, I mean, I've known people like that. To look at them, you would never in a million years think whatever, you know, poor guy's down in his luck. And here he, he's well-versed in all kinds of stuff when you actually sit down and talk to him, you know. So that's Adam's thing. Him, you know, with the food thing, I was like, well, he could be Taurus or Cancer with the food thing. But I, in the end, I felt like, overall, he's a Gemini. He's a Gemini because he has so many diverse interests, all types of friends and associates, and he talks. He talks a lot. You know, that's that's a Gemini. They, they talk a lot. And it could be the downside of Gemini when he goes on his rants. That can be like a negative expression of Gemini energy where they just talk, 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 and don't start, shut up. Uh, but he's very intelligent, but he's also witty and his sarcasm and everything. So overall, he could be Gemini, but I wouldn't be surprised if he has like Cancer rising, Taurus moon, or vice versa. You know, there's some Cancer and Taurus in there because he's a, he's a gourmet chef to boot <laughs> on top of everything. Uh, next and uh, the not the last, second to last person we're going to do is uh, his wife, Eve. They're Adam and Eve, a little joke there. Uh, she was a one, too, all, you know, all over the place. 
Uh, Virgo, she's sort of a hypochondriac, so I almost went with Virgo for her. But in the end, I ended up saying that she was more of an Aquarius. Because she's another one that's just a little bit strange, a little bit weird, kind of quirky. That's that Aquarius stuff. Also very intelligent, intellectual. Um, always thinking, always learning about the latest treatments. And she lives her life in like unusual circumstances. She's not... Um, run of the mill by any sort you know she's running around with Adam and the two of them with their banter it's that air sign energy where they you know they go back and forth and they're always chatting talking talking and everything all right this is the last one that I decided to do and that was old Barbara I there was Leonard Walt and Bernard who were on my list but I felt like I just really didn't know enough about any of those three to make a judgment because they were just sort of minor characters as is Barbara uh, but she was pretty easy to peg too. I mean, I think she's Capricorn all day long. She's so, you know, dutiful. She's so, well, Vir could be a little Virgo too. She's definitely Earth. You know, play by the rules. Let's, you know, I, I won't let anybody, you know, my career comes first. And she wears the uniform. She can be real strict and rigid about, you know, her career and her uniform and all this stuff. But when she lets her hair down, which she does with Maurice, she can be really passionate underneath. Um, you know, and she's nobody's fool. Same with Ro Ruth Ann. Like, they're trying to pull these scams on her. Like, she's the dumb, you know, the goofy, uh, or like, what's his name from Colonel Clink Schultz? You know, I know nothing or whatever. Like, this, like the, the town idiot that they're pulling the wool. No, they're not pulling anything over on her. She knows exactly what's going on. But she's just like, you know, I know what's going on. You're not fooling me, but... You know, um, yeah, I'm still going to uphold the law or whatever. If she just got this duty first, business first kind of attitude, but also has this much softer side and everything. All right, so that's my assessment of the main characters of the cast of Northern Exposure. It is a really cool show if you haven't watched it. I mean, I'm not being paid by them in any way. I just li really do like it. It is streaming on Prime first time in like 30 years as of this recording in early 2024. Uh, so if you like any of these characters or like what I said or you know some astrology and you think you want to discuss below in the comments, I'd like to hear what you say or if you think there, that I was, you know, this one could be this sign or that rising or whatever, cool, you know, definitely leave a comment. Real quick, I just wanted to let you know that I do do readings, and you can find me on my website only. I will never solicit you through any social media messaging um, to offer up readings. So if you wanted to consult with me, you could always go to my website. I run various specials throughout the year. Uh, and as of recording this, I'm running an Aries Ingress special, but there's different things throughout the year. But you can always go to my website. I won't ever message you through... Um, social media, you know, trying to hit you up for readings or anything. Those are imposters. So, VickiVerly.com, Rock and Roll Prophetess on YouTube. If you hit that like and subscribe, I'd highly appreciate it. Have a great day, and I'll be back again soon. Bye.